Hello indie game fans! Gamescom 2019 is just about to begin, with some interesting E3-like press conferences and announcements to come. So an exciting time of year for sure. Gamescom is the largest public-facing gaming convention, and with it comes the Indie Arena booth as well, so here are the top 10 best upcoming indie games from Gamescom 2019. Smell that country air! There's nothing like this in the city. And now, it's all yours, just as it's stated in your uncle's will. Rest his soul. I feel like the luckiest man on earth. Where are my pigs at? Wow, a cow house, a corn bush, potato orchard, spooky hatch! Whoa, 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 spooky hatch? Oh, you gotta come down here. It's like an old bunker. I ain't getting down no hatch. Oh, come on. What could be safer than a bomb shelter? Safe from what? Nothing bad has ever happened around here. Atomic Crops is the fusion of a top-down shooter with a Stardew Valley-style farming game with the H.O. story of inheriting a relative's farm and moving to the countryside, only to have it blown up by a nuclear explosion. Somehow you are supposed to multitask growing and watering your crops versus shooting mutants with my favourite pixel art of course. The roguelite dungeon crawler visual novel Boyfriend Dungeon features weapons that can transform into your romance options and is a pretty weird concept for sure. Merging a dating sim and a procedurally generated dungeon crawler is pretty innovative to say the least and shows how unique indie games can get. When Cyber Shadow was first showcased a couple of months back, many people immediately gravitated towards the title for its Ninja Gaiden-esque look and action with such an awesome retro pixel art look. Being published in part and co-developed by Yacht Club Games, makers of Shovel Knight, this is a perfect match between developer and publisher and is a title that is very high on my overall list of upcoming games. A pixel art metroidvania with cosmic horror elements, Out Buddies sports impressive visuals and is set in Balam, a sunken city of the old gods, where you play as a shipwrecked adventurer and are stuck in the city and trying to find his way out. The robotic buddy actually allows for local co-op and this should be out in October.
speaking of Lovecraftian horror, Sea Salt is one where you play as the force of Dagon, summoning and controlling a horde of minions to blight the human lands. Love the use of organs in the trailer, and of course the pixel art. With 16 different creatures, the strategic use of terrain, and even special hunter enemies and bosses, this should be quite the fun experience, so think Pikmin but with more tentacles and death. Pine is an open-world 3D action-adventure RPG in a world where humans never reach the top of the food chain, but rather we have gigantic anthropomorphic animals instead. This looks very ambitious and from a small team as well, and again, it's supposed to be out in October. You made this world in your image. It's a sick joke. An affliction. A creeping curse that swallows you whole, a fallen, broken, lost control, and now a choice is in your hands. The Ring of Pain and its demands. Ring of Pain is another upcoming roguelite card game, but appears to be much more streamlined, with the encounters and enemies seemingly being arranged in the eponymous Ring of Pain where items and equipment play a much larger role. Of items, types and slots defined. Seeking treasure, strength compounds. Passive powers, some profound. When death approaches, readjust. Your final choice is who to trust. Another pixel art roguelite platformer, Scourgebringer is a very stylish action game where you slash and blast your way through enemies, trying to uncover the secrets of your past. Platforming and combat looks very fluid, and what more can you ask for in a game? The pirate-themed open-world exploration and farming sim, Stranded Sales, has me very intrigued as a fan of farming games.
Rather than being solely focused on planting crops and raising animals, there are islands to explore, enemies to defeat, and treasure to find. So get your swashbuckling on later this year. One of you guys just asked me in the comments recently about what happened to Tunic. After making a splash at E3 2018, it was conspicuously absent from this year's show, but it's supposed to be at Gamescom as well. Zelda Like a Fox looks very awesome with the low-poly art style, so fingers crossed we'll get a date or something later this week. For more upcoming indie games, check out the previous video or click on the recommended playlist and I will see you after the jump.